Hi guys, this is Cyberhorn 92 here. I'm here, the one and only. Who, who are you? <laughs> Just joking. It's George Ber um, Burnell, right? George Burnell. I, I believe. Yeah, George Burnell. Yeah. Burnell. My, my apology. Um, but mm -hmm. guys, um, one of my favorite players by far. There's so many, but this guy is coming. Um, I don't know where he topped back to back YCS 250 California um, from the Los Angeles from last week. No, two weeks. And then the week after, he went to the Vegas Regional and he topped that one as well. What deck were you playing and, and why do you play that deck? <laughs> okay, so uh, hi everybody. Uh, my name is Robert Bernard. Yeah, I top, uh, top 16 YCS Los Angeles. And then the weekend after, I got fourth place on the Regional. In Las Vegas, Nevada, I'm um, playing Tastira. I play two different fields for the events. All right, sounds good. Uh, would you like to showcase uh, the deck list uh, that you play for the Vegas one? And then uh, you can talk about a little bit um, from the YCS 250 that you play two different deck lists um, that are different. Uh, sure, yeah. So for the for the Vegas Regional, I base my build. So for the Vegas Regional, I base my build of the Australian guys. Uh, they made top eight. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. The three of them made, made top eight. So I wanted to try something different for the, for the regional. I really liked their build. Uh, I wanted to try it on person. And it worked out really well for the regional. So uh, here is, is uh, three unicorn. Uh, three fairway. Two right star. I guess two scarecrow. Three ash blossoms. That is the monster lineup. Uh, so for the spells, I use uh, three birds, three planet. I opted for two theosis because uh, I kept uh, growing uh, more than one. I kept breaking on it, so I wanted to try two. I also did two for the YCS Los Angeles, and it worked out perfectly. So yeah, two theosis. And they play this package. They play three trusts and three talents. This card was so good in the mirror match. It was almost a uh, guaranteed win in the mirror match. It was great. Uh, they play uh, a one heart defender just a one turn for me. Uh, I, uh, the only change I made from their field is that I played the second desires and I played two prosperities. And also for the trap lineup, I played uh, three Imper, three Sun Judgment, two Fine Strike, and one, one Big Man. This is all based on their field. And they were really good because we played six Golden Second cards in the Talents of Trust. Uh, so you got the space to put in these coins first. And they're always live, so this card was pretty good. Makes sense. Uh, do you mind? I'll move the cards at uh, the bottom to the top. They can see for a second. Sorry, I kind of got cut out. Yeah. Yep. So do you move? Yep. So yeah, that was the uh, that's the trap line yeah. for the deck. That's actually kind of scary, um, because uh, me and my friend we went to a uh, case tourney, um, for the trophy, um, before the YCS pre reg Yeah, the Australian Australia player came um play and they mean the strike and solemn i say dang that's actually a big brain not gonna lie because like rise hard pass is not strong enough and then people just mm -hmm. make a transition or either the rise hard pass or the full zone lock and with the back rows, oh my goodness plus a hand trap oh my goodness <laughs> yeah they, they they did a really good job you know right with the deck and um, yeah i tried out their build for for the vegas it worked out it's true me well and I, yeah. I, I was really surprised with the result um, I usually went for for the double and right hard play, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and having this as a backup be almost like guaranteed game. So it was really good for me. Yeah, that's was, actually pretty strong. Mm -hmm. For the extra, I played Dao, Baron, Garuda. I played two Zeus. I played two big guys, one nine hacker. This is for skill drain. I, this time I played triple or right hard. Changuera and the Dark Iron. Alright, look pretty staples. Was there a time you need uh red eyes uh flare metal or water dark card that burn damage or not really? No, not really. Uh, during this tournament, uh 
I never went into time, but never, never did it. Uh, well, only went into time once at the last round, and yeah, the red wouldn't have made a difference. So yeah, Makes didn't sense. come up. All right, all right. Uh, so for the side, yeah, I just placed my my bill of third deck. So I played three limestone, one D barrier, two two bell, three shifter, a uh, three hard ruler, and instead of mid, I wanted something else for the mirror match. So I opted for Kurigara. Oh, I felt that one. yeah, because post YCS, uh, I felt like this is better against Sprite. And in the mirror match, it's always light, even if they go for the lock five, because they usually go for back row. Or if they do a right hard pass, this is always going to be light. So I opted for Purikara over their nip, which is what they they used. They were really good for me. Yeah, and like as much monster your opponent has, that gained like 1,500 attack for each one of them. Is that correct? And that is correct. <laughs> That's crazy. <laughs> all right, all right. Yeah. And, um, and during the end place, you get to special summon back and monster, so against deck like Maduria. Oh. Um, if you resolve this, it's usually a game because during the end place, you get to summon back uh, Maduria Beast, or you get a Baron to put pressure. Uh, oh. During the mirror match, you get summon back a Rysar or whatever. So, it's, yeah, this was uh, a really good card. This was this is what I chose over Nid, just because of the popularity of Sprite and wanting something better. In the yeah, match. that's true. And also, um, I heard that card is like one of the highlight cards. Either you draw it like before or after, like because like you draw a like you draw after it kind of like not the greatest, but like you have to draw it before. But yeah, that's like a good meta call um for that card. And um, that card been skyrocketing ever since the uh, YC's uh, 250 and some other regionals as well. Um, yeah, but, it went from like an eight dollar card to like thirty something. So yeah. you want to pull out it, it's a really good card. Yeah, really crazy. Um, you want to show us a brief summary of your um the two hundred fifty that was like completely different um for the Vegas one. Yeah, sure. So for the two fifty, uh, I went for uh more handcraft bill. Uh, uh -huh. So instead of the the Australian bill, I just went for like a higher handcraft ratio. Mm -hmm. Uh, I also played the the third pot. I main two enemy controllers. I also main two cosmic cyclone. I main three bailers. And uh, I have the ogre. This was in the main instead of the sudden judgment, uh, the sudden strike. And I didn't play a uh, big bang for that event. So for LA, I didn't play big bang, neither sudden judgment or the talents and the trust. I may play this instead. Uh -huh, uh -huh. And in the side, I. I went for, because I didn't play the either trap, I went for like a, a stronger cards going first because I didn't want to go a right start or double a right start pass without something to fully stop my opponent. Mm -hmm. So for going first, I played three rivalry. Yo! <laughs> yeah, they were really good against, especially against Napoleon Rurik. They will summon the, the Hugi and on rest, you can uh, do the rivalry. So if they don't have destruction, or oh, they don't have a, a way out, this usually game. So he was also good against Branded. Oh. And even if you go seven and they do the the nightmare lock, you flip with oh. something and you stop the follow up. That is smart. Never thought about that. Okay, okay. Uh, I play in that field, I play the Evil Match, the Third Cosmic Cyclone, and the Change of Art. Um so that was and I played the Omega for the Baylor. And the Red Eye Flare Dragon, I only summoned it once, and that was the main difference between the LA and the Las Vegas one. Yeah, and uh, for the um, LA, did, was that a 40 card spill, or how many cards was that? It was 40 for oh. LA and 41 for Vegas. Nice, nice, nice. Uh, two more questions, and then I'll, um, then I will be wrap up the video. Um, but yeah, how was the effect uh, Baylor? Was there like a time that like um, it was actually pretty good? Like you worry about uh, thrust or um, uh, shifter or something like that, or not really? So okay, so effect Baylor for me was great, just mm -hmm. because uh, first people didn't expect effect Baylor because uh, we play a right start, so mm -hmm. you wouldn't think we play effect Baylor. My thought process for effect Baylor. Well, the first, usually if you have a right start on board, it's game. Uh -huh. So they have to get rid of their right start either by Kaiyuli 
doing a kaiju, uh, doing a book of moon eclipse. Oh, okay, okay. So, so you will still have this in hand. It's also great going second against that, like Grand Death, Flounder. Even the mirror match is not dead. They mm -hmm. go for Unicorn and Baylor, and it's not dead. And another thing is that because during during the 3v3, a lot of people were playing the books. So uh, I think, I thought people had the mindset to play cards like Lightning Storm, Evilly, like uh, that break the whole field. Mm -hmm. So I wanted to have follow, I wanted to have interactions in different places. Mm -hmm. So for me, Baylor gave me like interactions in hand which wouldn't be affected by cards like Lightning Storm or Evening Match or stuff like that. Okay, okay, that makes sense. And then um, the second question, um, what's your thoughts about uh, Forbidden Lands? A lot of you have started cutting out, some um, kept it in. Uh, what's your thoughts inside of that card? So the thing is that when the format first started, I think people were, uh, were still like, it was on the fine. Yeah, that's true, that's true. So yeah, so I thought that because um, Forbidden Lands was stronger, but right now the format like has you you, you see that it's not mostly cash. Like yeah. people want to play different decks. That's I true. felt like Forbidden Lands was dead a lot of the times uh -huh. uh, during playtests. It did, I usually it's used it more to decrease the attack, so it was being underwhelming. Mm -hmm. So I don't think for cards that we're gonna be like against every matchup. Okay, that makes sense. That so makes that's sense. why I went away from Cosmic into two enemy controllers and two, uh, from Lance into two enemy controllers and two Cosmic Cyclones. Yeah, makes sense, makes sense. Because like, um, those are like more effective, like other um, decks are out there. Understandable. And, uh, and, and they're not there against the mirror match because you can hit a bird, you can hit a planet, you can hit a set back row, so yeah. Oh, makes sense, makes sense. Um, before ending this video, uh, you want to give any uh, shout outs to anyone? Oh, uh, sure. Shout out to all the AC community for the support of us. Shout out to Francisco Santiago, who let me stay at his house. Shout out to Nick, uh, Mitchell Martin, Noah, who, who always give me the ideas, answer my questions. And yeah, shout out to, to you, to your channel, and, and thank you for having me here. Anytime, anytime. Congrats, um, George. And guys, watch out. George is coming up pricing. I don't know. You already know what it is. And your boys, everyone, 92 is signing out. Thank you.